Welcome back to another Tech Tips with Flyboys. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the electronic ignition leads on the ElectroWear electronic ignition system. So to start out, we've got a coil pack mounted up here on the firewall. Now, one of the keys for this one, as opposed to regular magneto leads, is you have to keep them separated by at least a quarter inch. So for this, they don't send a lot of spacers in the kits. So you'll see these little guys come in the kits. There's really not enough to do an entire engine. So I substitute by using, um, by using eight inch zip ties and I make my own clamps or spacers. So they look like this. So I take one and I go around the outside and then I put one in between each to give me my spacing. When I pull it snug, I've got it just enough where I can move the lead through it, but it's also solid enough that it's not gonna allow this to, to move excessively. So as far as the routing, typically I've got one coil that I designate as upper leads and the other coil I designate as the lower leads. Um, I, des I always designate number one or the one being powered strictly off the aircraft as the bottom leads. The one coming off of the backup battery I designate as the upper leads. This one here I have designated as number two. It is doing all of the upper leads. The coil on the other side I have designated as number one doing all of these lower leads. So on the back side of the engine, make sure you maintain clear of any moving part and use uh, uh, use rubber ADEL clamps as you're coming across to kind of secure everything. Um, I've got to add a couple more down here so this isn't so wobbly, but this is kind of how we route everything through. So up here on the rocker covers, I add two washers and a 3 8 ADEL clamp. For the sensor here, I just fabricate a little piece of 32 thousandths or 43 thousandths aluminum, whatever I have available while I'm on the road, and I make a drop down with another clamp where I can catch all of these sensor wires. We really want to keep the spacing on it. Uh, JPI, Electronic International, uh, Garmin, and even in Electrowares manuals, they call out maintaining spacing so that you don't have the signal interference from the ignition system. And then we want to keep the spacing on the leads so they don't have a chance to come together and cause them to crossfire. So kind of keep that nice and good. And down here, we always want a little bit of a loop so that if you do need to trim it down over time, that you've got the ability to do that without stretching them, making them too tight. But you also want to be able to keep them away from stuff like the exhaust, your exhaust gas temperature sensors, your CHT sensors. So by putting a little bit of a loop in there, now we have the ability of moving the lead around to get it exactly where we want it. So this one, um, I just have number, <clears throat> excuse me, number five in the back. I've already got started and I've got that one in the cylinder. I've got my loop. This is clear of the sensors. So, same thing with here. I don't have it installed yet, but I've got a loop in it. So you've got a rough idea how you're going to set it when you get ready to terminate your ends. This one here, same thing. I've got it clamped, but this one, as of right now, how it's sitting loosely, I'm sitting on the EGT wire and the CHT wire. So by doing this, now we've got to decide how we want to put the sensor or the wire in there to manipulate it so that we can maintain our clearance. Once we've got it in there, we can twist it a little bit as we tighten it down in order to, to maintain our clearance between all the wires. So now let's take a look at how we actually terminate the ends of it because this does not go right up the center of the lead as a lot of people like to think. So this here is a piece of the ElectroWear ignition lead. So if we take and we cut this back where we look at the cross section, you can see there's a thick outer coating, but in the middle, it's black. Well, you don't put it right up to black. If we take and we cut some of this rubber coating off, you can see the wiring in the middle. There's that black. I actually went a little too far and I don't actually didn't go far enough. Let's see if we can strip this black coating back. There we go. So now you can see the wiring exposed in there. So we want our spring, which looks like this, we want the spring to go right along 
the edge of this wire when you've got it installed correctly. So if you've got any material between the spring and the wire, it changes the resistance. Now the spark has to jump through material in order to get to the spring, which at higher altitudes creates problems and potentially causes surging or during a mag check on the ground will also show as a dead cylinder. Well, it's not a spark plug. It's because the spring wasn't adequately installed. You might also know some erratic or abnormal temperatures on the cylinders or the exhaust gas temp for the very same reason when running off of just one system or another. So as far as the troubleshooting aspect of it, if you do a mag check, or in this case an electronic ignition system check, to make sure that both cylinders are, uh, both systems are operating correctly, and you see a cylinder drop offline, now you can quickly and easily go to that cylinder and look at your spring, look at your wire, make sure everything is done, but also you want to look at the spring engagement into the plug. So you want to make sure you have just a little bit of resistance or tension on that spring as it goes into the spark plug to make adequate, um, adequate contact. So if we cut this back down, or in this case I'm going to spin it around, this is how it would look after you cut it, after you get it to size. You're going to slide your barrel, or your nut, and slide that on there. We're going to take a little bit of dish soap. This is one of my handy dandy quick easy tricks. We're going to put a little bit of dish soap on the end. And lube that all up nice and good. And with the square end, we're going to take the square end so it goes out of the nut. And we're just ever so slightly going to work it onto the end of the lead and with everything soaked up it will push through nice and easy we're going to grab our rag we're going to pinch the wire on the end and we're going to push that through a little bit more now i've got enough that i can grab it with my rag and i can pull that barrel nut or ferrule onto the wire now if we take our rubber grommet and stick our grommet in place and on the newer systems they will use a flat washer in order to prevent the gasket from squeezing down so we will squeeze that onto the end put that down and I go by measurement so this is an REM spark plug so I use my handy dandy scale and we go to 28 thousandths, or sorry, 2832 on the gauge, so right there. So just a handy dandy scale. Set it to 28. Now I am going to pinch the end of my lead, and it will start to open up. Once it opens up, you get a little bit of spacing. Now you can take your spring. And you can put it down in that little area that's open right along the wire. And as you push it in, you can feel it going over the, the wire and you'll have little bumps or little ridges as it passes through. If you get it all the way in, it should look like this. So it's not in the center, but it's off to the side right up against the lead. Now, when you pull your your, uh, your nut down, you should have proper engagement into the spark plug. So if you can, let's see. So if you can see right there, and this is actually a little too much. So now that we've got this formed, as we do a fit check, let's see if we can find a good angle here. There we go. Now, as we put this into the plug, we've got a little bit of resistance where it makes contact. So we want just a little bit of resistance as it goes into the spark plug. So when you've got the nut screwed down, you've got positive resistance, and it's not causing it to come off an arc between the lead and the plug, because that will damage the plug, and it will also damage the lead. That will be evident by black marks and arcing either along the end here or along the end of your spring. You can also see it inside your spark plug.
So this is how we install leads out here in the field. We hope this video helped. Take the time and read through the installation manuals. We can't emphasize this enough. So it's just more than me giving you information. This is information that has been taught. This is information that has been published. This is the information you need to follow. You can look up electroware.net, scroll down to tech support, go into the installation docs, uh, EIS 61000 for a six cylinder engine like we're working here today. Also the EIS 41000 if you have a four cylinder under section 10, I believe it is, you should be able to find the ignition lead installation procedures. Read through that, follow this procedure, take care and pay careful attention to how you're routing and also how you are installing. Again, we hope this video helps. This is Adam with Tech Tips for Flyboys. Remember, flying isn't dangerous, crashing is. Fly safe, we'll see you here next time. Thank you.